Namaste. Namaskaram vanakam namo namaha jai Ganesh. The following was a planned talk to be delivered on the Clubhouse app to a group that often titles itself Discussions on Dharma, led by one Virya Acharya. And he was specifically holding a room entitled Fake Hindus. Now, prior to this, I was having a, trying to have a few email conversations with this fellow, Virya Acharya, and wherein he uses, like many Hindus do, the words God and Lord, and Bhagwan and He. So I was simply trying to point out to him, as I do to many of our fellow Hindus, that using the Christian terms God and Lord is really counterproductive for us. And we'll go into that a little bit in the planned talk. And also Hindus have to be much more aware of what we are assuming to be a reality and how much we may be actually falling directly in line with the Abrahamic monotheistic religion simply changing the names. Remember, it is basically Christians who use the words God and Lord. They will never use our Sanskrit, Tamil, Hindu terms and concepts. So it is really counterproductive for us. And again, this is where we Hindus need to do our purva paksha on Christianity, because when they say God, they are referring to a one male, as opposed to goddess, creator being. And obviously, as we often point out to the Christians, please prove that there is such a one male, creator, being. And being here is a noun, it's not a verb. So too with many Hindus, when they use the words God and Lord, they're not referring to the Abrahamic God, they're referring to their specific deity as they see it. Most often Vishnu, Krishna, though there are some very negative sectarian saivas also, and Shaktites perhaps. And they simply uh, use God in place of the Abrahamic God, and now this becomes Vishnu, Krishna, and they see this as a one He, creator, being. And to them also, I would say, please prove that there is this one male creator being. So, we Hindus should really think deeply about this, and are we falling in line, really, with the what is basically a mindset of trying to find, which is actually an unprovable, one male creator being noun. So, I plan to give a little conversation on this group called the Fake Hindus, but however, this fellow Virachari would not only not let me speak, he wouldn't even let me remain in the room to listen. So we must ask ourselves, who is really the fake Hindu when we won't even engage with our fellow Hindus? And the purpose should be for all of us as Hindus to try to become a united Hindu family because, again, historically, right up to the present, there are enough forces that are trying to divide us apart. So with that in mind, um, enjoy listening to what was supposed to be a planned discussion on this clubhouse group held by Virachadia, often titled Discussions on Dharma, and this one was entitled Fake Hindu. So I have no idea what the discussion was all about. So please consider the following. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste, namaskaram, vanakam, namo namaha, jaya Ganesh. With such an incendiary title, fake Hindus, there's bound to be some fireworks in here. So it would behoove the author here to set the stage and define for all of us what is, in his opinion, a real Hindu, which might open a can of worms of a narcissistic hierarchy. We Hindus desperately need to come together. There are enough outer forces that historically, right up to the present, have tried to separate us. And sometimes we don't need them to separate us. We do a professional job of separating ourselves. So perhaps the only fake Hindus are those who are basically stealing 
everything from the Hindu yoga dharma and then claiming that it's not Hindu. Ironically, this is many of the gurus of today. This is the motive behind the spurious yoga movement that claims to basically be non-Hindu and taught by non-Hindus. So as Hindus, we need to come together and realize some of our commonalities and also be able to accept criticism when necessary. Hindu dharma is so grand that none of us knows everything. We have to be willing to teach sometimes and we have to be willing to take a step back and learn. So, for example, the Christian term God really does not apply to the Hindu yoga dharma. And Christians will never say Brahman bless you. So this is something that we Hindus need to eradicate from our lexicon. Remember, God is an English word meaning a one male as opposed to goddess, thus insulting the many matas of Hinduism, the devis, a one male creator being. And actually to date, nobody's ever been able to prove that they know this one supreme deity, this one supreme god, if you will. And when Hindus enter into this, they are really playing into the hands of the monotheistic religions, which we are not. So what is it that we basically believe in common as Hindus? Tatvam asi. That thou art. That we are the Atmana. The Satchit Ananda, the Jyoti Shakti Ananda Shanti, that is our soul. This is a commonality no matter what else we believe as Hindus. That we are this Atmana of love, light, and energy, Satchit Ananda, Jyoti Shakti Ananda Shanti. And we basically live this Hindu yoga, religious, spiritual, scientific lifestyle. And please remember that yoga, again, which has been so distorted today by many non-Hindus and by many uh, Hindus who perhaps don't call themselves Hindus, this Sanskrit Hindu word yoga means yuj atman brahman cha, to yoke to our atmana and brahman. And remember, brahman is not God. Brahman is not a being noun. It is a neuter term for the greater forces of jyoti shakti ananda shanti, love, light, and energy. So here are a few points that we need to understand as Hindus that we all share in common. We share this yoga lifestyle. Look in the Bhagavad Gita, you have chapters on karma yoga and bhakti yoga and jnana yoga. Hanumanji is considered the great karma yogi and bhakti yogi. This is our lifestyle as we seek the atmana, atmadarshana paramo dharma. So we should respect our sampradayas, whether we're saiva, vaishnava, or shaktait, harihara, ekarupa, guna, shila. We need to respect that we have many philosophies, darshanas, nyaya, visesik, mamsa, vedanta, sankhya, yoga. We have many scriptures, Vedas, agamas, tantras, mahabharata, ramayana, tirukara, tirumantram, puranas. We have a vast understanding of what in a sense, we are seeking to learn what holds us together. That is dharma, dri, to hold. We have our sva, dharma, our personal dharma. We have the respect for bhume mata, which is actually the first word we have, ritta, ritvijam, ritta dharma, victory to bhume mata. We have our ashrama dharma as we go through our natural stages of life, brahmacharya, grihasta, vanapras, sannyas, and perhaps the life as a sannyasin. We have our Varnashrama Dharma, which is not caste. Again, like God, caste is a word that should not be in the Hindu lexicon. And we recognize that there are Sudras and Vaishyas and Kshatriyas and Brahmins. And importantly, we have all of these qualities within us also. That's the Purusha Sukta. And we recognize a great understanding of the inner workings of the human body, the chakras and the brain hemispheres, Idda, Pingala, Shushmana, this is all part of the Hindu yoga dharma, which is being so distorted today because we Hindus have a difficult time working together as a united Hindu family. And truly, Hindu dharma, whether you say Hindu, Hindu, Ritta dharma, Vedic dharma, Yoga dharma, Sanatan dharma, Brahmanism, Hinduism, the Hindu religion, all synonyms for basically the same thing. We are recognized, we have very specific beliefs, Tattva we believe in karma and samsara, dharma. 
So it's a reli glo global religion now. There are Hindus all over the world coming from many countries, many ethnicities actually, speaking many different languages. Of course, we need some core of Sanskrit principles. But again, when it comes to claiming to know the supreme deity, and we have sectarian Hindus, of course. I mean, that's life. The rishis on this point simply said, ka, who knows? So let's set aside our differences and our conflicts and work towards a Hindu renaissance and look at ourselves as a united Hindu family. Namaste.